lost my clock. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Each year, the Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion has committed to delivering a State of Diversity Address, during which time the Vice President will provide a status report designed to celebrate successes and acknowledge opportunities for growth as WVU strives to create the safe, diverse, and welcoming community every Mountaineer deserves. Today's address will provide Vice President Poor an opportunity to deliver the address followed by a question and answer portion with students. There will be an opportunity for all attendees to ask questions towards the end of the event. We will have microphones available to ask questions at the end. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that West Virginia University, with its statewide institutional presence, resides on the lands that includes the ancestral territories of the Shawnee, the Lenape, Haudenosaunee, Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, Mohawk, Tuscarora, Cherokee, and many other indigenous peoples. In acknowledging this, we recognize and appreciate those indigenous nations whose territories we are living on and working in. Indigenous peoples have been in the land currently known as West Virginia since time immemorial. It is important that we understand both the context that has brought our university community to reside on this land and our place within its long history. We also recognize that colonialism is a current ongoing process. And as scholars seeking truth and understanding, we need to be mindful of our present participation in this process. I would now like to welcome Dean Amelia Reinhart. Dean Reinhart is the 18th Dean of West Virginia University College of Law. She was previously the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and a Professor of Law at the University of Utah S. J. Quinney College of Law, whose faculty she joined in 2010 following two years as a visiting Assistant Professor of Law at Florida State University. Prior to entering the Legal Academy, Dean Reinhart practiced law for several years in New York and in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Dean Reinhart received her JD from University of College Law School. She received a Master's in Science in Biomedical Engineering from Tulane University and a Bachelor of Science in, a Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering summa cum laude with departmental honors from Tulane University. Prior to attending law school, Dean Reinhart worked as an engineer at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Dean Reinhart teaches contracts, patent law, intellectual property survey, and leadership of the law. Thank you so much, Ajari. Um, I'm so grateful to be here today celebrating our university's commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging in our community. Maya Angelou, the great author, wrote, diversity makes for a rich tapestry, and we must understand that all the threads of that tapestry are equal in value, no matter their color. As we look around our vibrant and industrious campuses and the state of West Virginia itself, we can see a vast, beautiful tapestry of threads, all equal in value and all important to care for and to tend individually and collectively. In this way, we will enrich each of our own experiences and our own endeavors will be a vanguard for diversity in our state and nation. Gathering for our annual address that celebrates all of our successes and faces head on all of our challenges gives us transparency and inspiration for the future. I am so thrilled to introduce Vice President Misha Poor to deliver our 2021 address. Misha L. Poor, a longtime champion of underrepresented people, serves as vice president and chief diversity officer for the diversion of diversity, a division of diversity, equity, and inclusion at West Virginia University. In that role, she motivates the Mountaineer family to recognize the value in diversity and challenges all that interact with her to create transformational change. Poor has been helping to light the way toward equity throughout her career. 
an attorney who served in the West Virginia House of Delegates from 2009 to 2014. She is an accomplished and sought after motivational speaker, public and political leadership consultant and strategist. The Women's Campaign Fund named her a game changer during her campaign for the U.S. House of Representatives for West Virginia's second congressional district. She has mentored and consulted with hundreds of elected officials throughout the nation as they seek higher office. Poor is also an experienced educator who serves as an adjunct professor at West Virginia State University as a faculty member in residence at the Center for American Women and Politics at Rutgers University and has teaching privileges here at the West Virginia University College of Law. In 2017, Poor became the first African American woman to be named president of the West Virginia State Bar since its 1947 founding. Prior to operating her own law practice, she was an attorney in the office of the Kanawha County Public Defender in Charleston, West Virginia. She is an alumna of the prestigious German Marshall Memorial Fellowship and a member of the Executive Committee for the Commission on Access, Diversity, and Excellence for the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities. In June 2021, Poor began her first term as president of the Big 12 Association of Chief Diversity Officers. Poor earned her bachelor's degree from Howard University in Washington, D.C., and her law degree from Southern University Law Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. She also graduated from the Women's Campaign School at Yale University. Welcome, Vice President Poor. Well, thank you very much. Well, happy Tuesday, everybody. I have to remember sometimes what day it is. Have you ever felt like you're losing the day since we've been in this quarantine and pandemic? Well, first of all, again, I know that there are people who are looking online, some people that will look at this after we do this, but I'm happy to be in the room with the ones that are here today. And I want to, I hope you're looking forward to this conversation and looking forward to the conversation with our students, our diversity ambassadors, and that you'll have some questions as we follow up. up. Let me first say thank you so much, Dean, again, for your hospitality to your team and all that you have done to set up this beautiful room. We appreciate the continued partnership with you. I want to let you all know that when I first met uh, Dean uh, Reinhardt, I told her that my favorite cousin's name was Amelia. And so I felt like we were family automatically. But then when she started uh, wearing the gold and blue, I knew it was meant to be. So it is so happy to have you as a part of the Mountaineer family. And I look forward to partnering with you as you continue to show your vision for the College of Law. So can we please give her a round of applause? Um, one of the things I will say to you is, is that President Gee ha is very committed to this. I think you know that, but I want you to know that he, his steadfast leadership is what has gotten us to where we are today. So some of the things you're going to hear us report about and some of the things you'll hear us talk about with the diversity ambassadors and, and from this address it was because President Gee has been committed to this for a period of time. He is someone that makes us lean into the Mountaineer values. He makes sure that we understand. And for those that don't know it, I'm always celebrating our values. Because if we really step, pay, pay focus to those things, some of the things that we've experienced would, be, would not be the issues that we're, we do experience, such as appreciation, appreciation of one another, who we are, what we are, where we come from, accountability, keeping each other accountable for the things in which we do. When you cause harm, that you try to correct that harm that you walk and talk the language of Mountaineers, which is togetherness. Respect, respecting each other's opinions. We don't always have to agree, but we need to walk in a space of respect. Curiosity, when you listen to someone's perspective, when you listen to what people are saying their experience have been, when you trust that that is their experience, even if it's not yours, you might learn something different about the world. And then service. I truly do believe that service is more than just painting buildings at a certain time of a year or planting trees and doing landscape for certain communities and organizations. Service is actually leaning in and getting to know one another. Service is stepping outside of your comfort zone and getting comfortable with uncomfortable discussions, being courageous in those things. That to me is also service, service to the world, not just service to others. You are a service to the world. So how you learn and how you adapt to the things that are around you is a part of that service. So I want to thank President Gee for his continued leadership. And I like to thank my team. My team, uh, I say it all to, to them all the time, but I like to thank my team. They have gone through a lot in the last year and a half. 
They have endured a lot of communications that have been friendly and some that has not been, but they've done it with grace and kindness. And I want to say to you that I see you, I love you, and I appreciate everything that you have poured out to this university um, and that you continue to do. I'd also like to thank our diversity, equity, inclusion campus. Um, our campus has stood up and held the university accountable. Our campus has said, you know what, we see some gaps, we want to make sure you see them, and we're going to communicate that to you. I thank you for using your voice. I want you to know that you've been heard and that we'll continue to listen to you. Um, that's something that I promised upon my arrival, and that's something that I still stay, stand true to. Um, to our West Virginia University Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council, I want to say thank you to you as well. Um, you heard Isuri speak on the land acknowledgement. One thing that we did yesterday on Indigenous Peoples Day is that we actually premiered WVU's land acknowledgement video. So you can see that on our website. You can see that on WVU's uh, social media website. We ask you to share it. We have to recognize our history. We have to understand what land we live and walk on. And we have to know that we have a responsibility to continue to share our story. This is all of our history, and we should be celebrating that. I also would like to say to every single person that has participated in the, making this Diversity Week what it is, thank you. If you don't know it, we have about 36 plus events that are happening just this week. Just this week across all three campuses. When I first arrived, one of the things I said I wanted us to do, we talk about we're one Mountaineer family, one WVU, then that means all of us. That means our Kaiser campus, that means our Beckley campus, that means our Morgantown campus. And this year we've been able to do this diversity week together. And I look forward to seeing my Mountaineer family here on this campus, Potomac State, sometime later on this week, as well as our uh, what WVU Tech campus in Beckley. So I look forward to seeing you and, and sending some love your way uh, prematurely. Uh, I'll see you later on. I think it's Thursday, um, tomorrow and Thursday. So I hope that you'll be able to come out to those events that we have scheduled there. Um, but I also want to say this. Now, while I'm celebrating Diversity Week, I want you to know this is just a week. We do this every single day. We do this every single day. And while we highlight the best of ourselves during this week, it should not be the only time that you come to events. It should not be the only time that you speak on these issues and, and educate yourself on these issues. This is just a great highlight. It's what I tell people, it's the Vision Super Bowl. We get an opportunity to kind of put our best team forward and let you see all the stuff that we get to do. And we are always moving down the field toward justice. And so I thank everyone that has participated, prepped the rooms, prepped the food, every single thing that you've done to make Diversity Week what we know it will be, we thank you. So if we can give everyone a round of applause, that would be helpful too, because I want them to know that we do appreciate them. I'd also like to do a special thank you to Isuri. Isuri has done an amazing job. She is one of our team members who is very committed and has been committed from day one of arriving on this campus to making sure that we walk within the convictions that we say we have, that we walk with the values of what this university is. And she is a true example of what Mountaineers should be. She loves this university. She loves this state. And she makes sure that when she goes in and out of a room, she leaves it better than it was when she, before she got in it. So if we could please give her a special round of applause. She has done a great job with making sure this week is what it has been. So thank you so much, Isuri. She doesn't like to be acknowledged, but you got to always stand up for your applause, sis. you got to stand up for your applause. Um, if you are wondering what our events are, you're like, well, what else is going on? Go to diversity.wvu.edu. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. You also can look at WVU's social media pages and see some of that information there. And so now that I've gotten all the thank yous out of the way, I've done all the housekeeping, let's get down to work. How many of you all have ever gone whitewater rafting? So this is going to be a little bit of call and response. You can raise your hand. Nobody, some people said no. How many of you have been kayaking? What about canoeing? What about putting your foot in the water? How many people have done that? All right. So when you do that, sometimes you can put it in still water. Sometimes you're standing back. Sometimes we don't want to do different things because of the rapid pace of things, the speed of it, the, the risk, the danger, the uncertainty. Well, let me tell you a little bit of experience. I, too, if some of these people who shook their heads, I was one time asked to do whitewater rafting. And the first time I was asked, it was in Montana. Anybody knows about Montana? That's a great place to go fishing. It's a great place to do outdoor stuff. It's a great place to do white water rafting. But because I am a proud African-American woman from Appalachia, I said, I can't do my first experience of white water rafting, and I have to do it at home. 
And the mere fact that my father is from Golly Hill, from Golly Mountain, from Fayette County, I was like, oh, I got to go home first. So I chose to do fly fishing instead in Montana. And I came on home. Now, that was an excuse not to make the leap. How about that? I'm going to tell you the truth. It was my excuse not to take the risk. But then I was asked again. This time I said yes. I said to someone, I said, I'm going to pray about it, and I'll let you know. So the next morning they said, what did Jesus say? I said, well, I guess I'm going. Uh, and so I did. And, and I will tell you that there, it, there's a stillness to, some, to the beginning of what you're doing. There's a stillness. You know, there's uncertainty. You know, there's like a roller coaster of emotions. And then there's that rapid thing. You don't know, but you have to lean in with your team. You have to trust your guide that they are going to instruct you on the things that get you down the river, the things that get you down and moving forward. Today, we're going to talk about navigating onward with intentionality and resolve. That is what we have been doing for the last year. We've been navigating onward. We've been intentional about the efforts that we've made. We have leaned into one another as a team, and we have trusted our guides, President Gee, our different administrators, me as the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And I thank you for that trust. So let's talk about a couple of things. One of the things that I find to be very important about this work is that we have partners. Can't do this by yourself. When I first started, I told you all we would start and we would strengthen relationships that we would make sure that it wasn't just my office's responsibility to do this work, that it was all of our responsibility, that I would meet you where you were, whatever that looked like, and help you continue to grow in the space of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We still have work to do, but we have also garnered a whole lot of partners on this journey. We've charted the course, and we're making progress. You heard me earlier talk about the WVU Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council. Let me explain to you what that actually is. Every single college on this campus has a designated chair and committee for diversity, equity, and inclusion. That chair has been appointed by the dean of each college because they have found that person to be someone that is trustworthy and that will report to them the initiatives and goals that are set by that committee. There is expectation of outcome, goals, short-term, long-term, and things that will begin to be educated to them on what they need to do specifically in their discipline. That is something that could only have been done with the support of the dean, the deans of each school, and the provost of this university. And so when you look on our website, you will see the list of every single chair. If you are in a college, you can contact that chair and say you want to get involved. What I would ask is this. If you feel there's more to be done, honey, put your foot in the water. Let's get to it. Because this is a collective thing that we're doing here. It's not a point of pointing the finger. It's a point of holding hands and figuring out how we will move down this path together onward with intentionality and resolve. I will say to you also when we talked about the video, the land acknowledgement video, that actually was the brainchild of our creative arts college. Our College of Creative Arts came up with the, the idea of the aerial footage, came up with the idea of the voiceover. They came up with something that would give value to the things that we say we, we value as far as inclusion and, and welcoming, welcoming community. Bonnie Brown, Professor Bonnie Brown, is the brainchild of the crafting of the language. She is over our Native American Studies program. And so we see the partnership of several different people from across campus who have come together to show exactly what we say we are as Mountaineers. And so when you see it, share it, send a note to someone on that committee, send a note to the dean of that college, thanking them for allowing us to continue to move forward in this initiative of inclusion. The other thing you will see is the inclusion website. That was something that was done out of the university relations. It is bringing all of the different works that's being happening, or the websites, the, the different resources that are available to our campus, not just our students, but our faculty and our staff, to one place. And while each entity may have their own website, it is a way to help you cipher through some of that noise, making sure that you can see all of the opportunities that you have available to you on this campus. The other thing that's beautiful about that site is if you have a suggestion, if you have an event, 
If you have a program that you think should be added, we want to hear that information from you. Because like I said to you before, we can't do this without one another. And so please, get on there. Let's be participating. Let's make sure we're participatory in everything that we're doing. Put an idea there. We're listening to that. We're looking at it. We're pulling it down. And we're going to act on it if it's something that we think falls in line with the values of this institution. The other thing you're going to be seeing shortly is a mental health and wellness website. As all of you all know, COVID has had a lasting impact on most of our mental health and our wellness. I think oftentimes we, we say because we're standing upright that we're okay. But I think that if I would be honest with you that there were some trying times during this quarantine. There are still some trying times that we are experiencing individually and as a family. And so this website is meant to give information, again, as a resource to our campus to say, here are some activities, some tips, some tools, some things and places that you can go if you just want to talk about it. And so that's something that we find to be valuable. The general counsel, Stephanie Taylor, she is working on the free speech and counter speech resource site. That is something that we have been telling the university is important to that we talk about. Yesterday, we had a panel where Stephanie and, and our former dean, John Taylor and Professor Taylor, served on, along with my Title IX coordinator and director of equity assurance, James Goins. And we talked about free speech and the impact of our words. We talked about the policy of this university as a public land grant institution, what is allowed and what we can't restrict. Opportunities and, and, and examples of things that could be done to counteract things in which you might disagree with. I'd ask you to go back and look at that recording for at least a baseline of information to get you started. And then lean into this free speech website. If you have other ideas, again, please make those suggestions. But when I tell you I want you to make suggestions, I also expect you to step up and do some of the work. Because it's not just one person to do the work. I've said this before, we are in this together and we're moving onward with intentionality and resolve. Something that I know that Jill Hess, someone who is over in my office that deals with our ADA compliance, that deals with our ADA education, she and some partners around campus have worked endlessly on featuring our ADA um, uh, map system. And so what this is, it is a, a map that allows our, our, our community to see external act, uh, accessibility routes and van services, pickups and drop-offs, where you can have easier access than others. It allows people to see exactly where they need to be, how they're going to get there, and making sure that they have the services provided to them uh, with readily available in an app. That will be version one. There's a version two that is also being planned that will dive deeper to talk about gender neutral bathrooms and where they're located. That will talk about where you can go for prayer rooms if you're looking for a prayer room on campus and other things. So we'd ask if that's something that you are interested in, keep your eyes out for it. It will be active very soon and we're excited about what that will be for our campus. The other thing that we've been working on is the culture of respect collective. One of those things, we are a part of the cohort for this. And this is something that looks at the university's policies and procedures, and there's six areas that they look at. Survival support, clear policies, multi-tier education, public disclaimers, and our school-wide mobilization on um, an ongoing self-assessment. The goal of this collaborative evaluation is to make sure that as a university, we are establishing a prevention team to promote collaborative and communication efforts for everyone that is engaged in prevention work, whether it be prevention from hazing, drug and alcohol abuse, sex and gender-based violence, discrimination, harassment, and the list goes on. The reality is we recognize that we are stronger when we're working together, not in silos. This campus needs to know that we are against anything that causes harm to a person from being able to work, live, and be on this campus. We want to make sure that people not only feel belong, that they belong, but that they're welcome and that they're nurtured. And if harm does come to them, that they have a place that they can turn to. The other thing that we talk about, you hear us talking, you've, if you've been to any of my conversations, you hear me talk about training all the time. 
Training, I tell people training is important. Training is the foundation that gets us to build on the other stuff that we want to do. And something that we have launched is the DEI classroom, diversity, equity, and inclusion classroom. Because we're in a virtual world, right now everything is online. You can go to our website and you can sign up for classes, registering, and, and you get a, information back. It allows us to know who will be in the room, and we begin to have discussions about the work that will help us be a stronger community. We talk on all kinds of different topics that relate to this issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion. You get to pick and choose your catalog of what you want to dive into, and we will be adding more to that. Once we have an opportunity to come fully back on campus, we will begin to do a lot of more more face-to-face -face classroom uh, work, but we ask you to, to, to look at that DEI classroom on our, on our website. Now that doesn't stop us from still doing trainings. We train every single day. We're in classrooms, with a professor, student group, fraternity, sorority, ask us to come. If it's within our bandwidth, we're there. We're trying to make sure that we hold true to the value of curiosity. If you want to know, we can talk to you about it. If we don't know, we'll figure out what we need to get to know and we'll come back and talk to you about that too. So the point is all of us will be growing together. Something I want everyone to pay attention to for spring of 2022, we want to make sure that we have collective opportunities for all of us to be heard and to learn. So there'll be some things that I want you to pay attention to. Oftentimes we send you things in the email and sometimes people don't open them. Sometimes people put them in a junk file. Sometimes people delete them automatically. I'm not saying anybody in the room here does it or online does that. All I'm saying that is that you should probably look for these surveys and information is going to be coming to you because that's your voice that we want to hear you in. Um, we're going to be working with the provost's office and institutional research on the national survey of student engagement. And that's called NESI. That's the NESI survey. So students, if you want to make sure that we're hearing some of the things about your engagement on this campus, we're asking that you take this survey. We're asking that you let your voice be heard. We also are going to be doing the faculty survey um, uh, on student engagement. That's called FESI. I'm getting them right, Nessie and FESI. Um, and so faculty, we recognize and understand that there's a lot of stuff that you have a voice and opinion on. And while this may not be the only way of getting information or the best way, it is one of the ways we want to hear from you. So we would ask that you would participate in the FESI survey. The other thing is that we have added to the FESI and the, and the NESI. Again, thank you for letting me do my abbreviations. I feel like I'm doing something. Thank you, Madam Provost. Uh, and we are adding inclus uh, inclusiveness and engagement, cultural diversity and academic advisory, civic engagement, and we'll also be adding a few other things to make sure that we're not leaving out things that we need to address. This survey information allows me to be able to dive deeper into initiatives that we need to be looking at as a university. Evaluating programs that we might have in existence that are not working in the best way that it could or developing new ones. Um, so please take this very seriously. Talent and Culture has also talked about, and again, in one of their emails, I think that they've done a campus conversation on it, they've talked about a touch point evaluation or culture survey is what they've named it. We're asking that you lean into that survey. And we have partners from around campus that will make it very specific to their area. I am one of those partners. The survey in which we will, we will launch at the appropriate time will lean into some of the things that allows us to get a touch point, which means it's just a glimpse of some of the areas. It's not going to be full-fledged in some of it, but it allows us to be able to get metrics and measurables to say, here are some things we can do short term to address maybe a, a concern or discomfort that you might be experiencing right now as we still are developing other initiatives for you. Institutional research. Now, one of the things I've been telling you is we have partners, and we have a beautiful partner in institutional research. They recognize the importance of transparency. I have talked about it. You have asked for it. And they want to make sure that they're giving you the information that you're asking for. They're looking at how to develop meaningful dashboards that give you touch point information with where we are with our different places and populations on campus. One of the things I want to talk about in more real terms is that when we talk about the workforce of our Mountaineer family, our staff and our faculty, what I can say to you is that we are staying steady with the national trend as it relates to hiring and retention. 
that is something that while it is okay to say we are with the national trend, it is not where we as mountaineers who walk in excellence want to remain. And so we have a lot of partners around campus who are diving deep to making sure that they're being intentional about how they are hiring, who they are hiring, and what talent they're bringing to this campus. You've heard me talk before about um, the provost, Mary Ann Reed. Mary Ann Reed and her team have done some significant work around university mission hired program. And what that is is they're being very intentional about targeting African Americans, Asian Americans, Asian international, the list can go on as identified, to be able to make sure that we are diversifying our faculty to make sure that we are recruiting and retaining individuals that bring a breadth of experience and perspective to this campus. Another thing that, that she's looking at and her team has been working on, the advanced uh, team has been working on the inclusion hiring initiative, which also begins to train and help elevate people to roles of administration and leadership. So there has been some intentional work around making sure that we're not just following the national trend, but that we are really reaching out to some campus communities. Now that's just the start of it. When I talk to you about going to my website, I'm asking to go to the provost website and other administrators' websites and find out what their agenda is. It's very easy to say nothing's being done, but have you really researched what they're working through? Have you sat through some of the speeches that they've given? Have you read some of the articles? And going back to that email, have you looked at your email lately? All that can be obtained in those emails. And if you're not getting the information you need, all you have to do is call or send an email. We're happy to respond. Something else that I know that we've been working on is micro-credentialing. We've been talking about this for a couple of years now, about making sure that we are balancing out our, our, um, our students, making them global ambassadors, making sure that it's not just their degree they're getting, but they're getting a true experience of what it means to be in the world when they're going to work toward different employers and things of that nature, that they're able to dive in with real information and expertise. And so we have some micro-credentialing that's gonna be coming out specifically around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so we're asking you to check that out also. For almost a year now, shy of a year, you could go onto yet again the Mountaineer News or our YouTube page and even the university's site to see our Let's Talks. Let's Talk comes out every Tuesday. It's you and it's me that's bringing you information about different topics such as xenophobia, equity, ableism, mental health and wellness, consent, food justice, and other topics. Just in two minutes, I'm able to drop some seeds of information that you may know, may to be refreshed on, or didn't know at all. And the goal of those two minute clips are to let you say, hey, maybe I need to be more curious about this, dive in and maybe do a Google search or two and find out more information about it. We want to find ways to reach you and dive deeper into the conversations. Something that will be our inaugural viewing of next week is called Let's Talk With. That's a little bit of a longer version of that, no more than 15 minutes, to dive into partners around this campus and beyond that talks a little bit about some of the topics we've discussed just a few moments ago and others. Our first one will be, uh, will be featuring Felicia Hooper. She is one of our behavior health specialists that's focused specifically on our black, indigenous, and people of color community. She does a lot more of making sure that we are seeing ourselves, paying attention to ourselves, and that we're being held accountable for things that can make people feel welcomed and most importantly, well. And so I would ask you to tune in when you see that and look for those. Those will come out maybe once a month, maybe every other month. We'll, we'll have to see, but, but what I will tell you, they will be coming out. We don't want to overwhelm you, but we want to give you information, and we want to know that we are being consistent with educating the campus community and beyond. On yesterday, you should have received an email that was Let's Connect. That's our newsletter. That tells you a couple of things that are happening from our Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Council. That gives you a glimpse of everything that they want to report to us that may be happening or coming up. And so you're getting information, and however you might look at it. You want to do a short video, we got it. You want to read about it, we got it. You want to do a little bit of deeper dive, we'll give you about 15 minutes of an extrovert that's in the room to talk to you about it. And then you have opportunities like this to talk and ask some questions. We have been working with um, our, our, our enrollment office. 
Um, Sharon Martin does a wonderful job, her and her team, of making sure we're looking at where we are with the numbers. You've heard me talk about the workforce. You've heard me talk about our faculty and our staff, where we're staying, where we want to be, what we're working on. One of the things that we've recognized, that as a community, the two communities that we have to be paying a little bit more attention to, is our black non-Hispanic community. Those numbers have decreased. Those are numbers that we have been working through and making sure that we're paying most close attention to. She has developed a uh, committee, a DEI committee that is focused on recruitment and retention of particular communities to make sure that we are seeing the messages that need to go out and that we're being intentional about that outreach. I'm excited about that, that work that is being done by Sharon's team, and I look forward to seeing those numbers increase. The other community that we have seen that has had a, a dip in uh, enrollment is our international students. One of the things that we've recognized is that there were some policies that were placed by the, you know, our administration, our U.S. administration, that was a was causing some some inability, inability to get visas and different documents to keep people in the, in the country, as well as, unfortunately, the limitations because of COVID for travel. And so we are working with um, the university and making sure that we're paying attention to particular communities that have been impacted by those policies, as well as COVID and travel, so that we can get those numbers back up. Because again, we know that this is the best place to be, and we know that we learn when everyone else comes and gives us their gifts and talents as well. And so we look forward to seeing our numbers increase in those areas. One of the things that you heard me talk about is the messaging and the marketing and the intentional efforts that are being done uh, by uh, the UR University Relations and Enrollment team. Um, you'll see a couple of positions around the, off the, the campus that are also opening up. I know for the Chamber College, they just hired a diversity outreach coordinator. Um, that's something that is very important to making sure that we're looking at opportunities of how we can diversify our school of business and how we can make sure that we're giving the best opportunities to our campus. Um, the other thing that you'll see is there's uh, several positions at the Health uh, Science Center. Um, and that's something that we, we are very excited about because we know that Every profession has a different way in which they need to approach this conversation. And the more help that we can get to make sure that we're having that conversation intentionally is always going to be important. I look forward to going to Potomac State, which you hear me talk about. They're actually going to be doing a grand opening of a multicultural center um, on tomorrow. And so that's going to be a celebratory time for us as well. So there are a lot of things, if you have heard me talk about, just in general, that we're doing. And these are just the small things <laughs> that we've talked about. And I believe I've given you a good overview of what we've done. You heard me begin this statement, this address, with whitewater rafting, the calmness, the rapid pace, the risk. But you heard me talk about onward motion, doing it intentionally, doing it as a family, doing it together as a team. I am very proud of what this institution has done. I am very proud of where I believe we will be heading. And I look forward to seeing everyone in this room, those virtual, those looking at the recording, standing in unison as we, as I say, come together with a common unity as Mountaineers, our community, and moving forward together with onward intentionality and resolve. I thank you for being here today. I look forward to more discussion with our diversity ambassadors and answering questions at the end. Let's go, Mountaineers. Thank you so much, Vice President Poor. Um, I feel like I've come full circle whenever I first interviewed for this job. In preparation for interviewing for this job, I watched the State of Diversity Address that was recorded here at the College of Law. And so this is, this is a really cool moment for me to be back in person since last year we delivered it virtually, to be able to be the person who was behind the scenes. I have huge amounts of empathy for the folks that were behind the scenes then, because I know the kind of work and collaboration it took to bring folks together. Um, I think this is a really fun part of the state of diversity, the part where we um, get to put Vice President Poor on, back on stage and, and ask you a bunch of questions. Um, but before we do that, I want to introduce some really special guests. Uh, we have students here. Oftentimes, I think it's important that we remember that the work that all of us do is for students at this institution. I want to be mindful of their roles here, of our roles here as faculty and staff members, of serving them, of creating a space where students can, can feel like they can be here and thrive and have an education um, 
that is that is worthy. And so I'd like to take a minute to introduce Shahad Hanif. Uh, Shahad is a Palestinian American, grew up in Morgantown, and is a sophomore majoring in psychology. She is a community service chair for the Muslim Student Association of WVU. Shahad enjoys cake decorating, spending time outdoors, and coffee. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd also like to introduce Eileen Turklu. Eileen is a first-generation stu graduate student at WVU. They graduated from WVU with a bachelor's in social work in spring of 2021, and is currently completing a master's in school of social work, a school of social work in spring of, and is expected to graduate in the spring of 2022. Eileen is working as an intern at the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and at, assists DDEI in organizing activities for students and ensuring students' voices across WVU are heard. In their free time, they enjoy reading tarot cards, hanging out with friends, and playing video games. Thank you both so much for being here with us. As we go through these questions, I want to be mindful of any audience questions that we might have. If you have, an, if you have a question, please feel free to raise your hand, holler at me, whatever works for you, and I'll bring a mic out to you. Um, but again, here we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna dive right into our questions. I believe we're off with you, yes? Yes. All right, um, so how is the division beneficial or how can it be a resource to diverse and marginalized students, faculty and staff of WVU? Well, I think um, a lot of times we, if, well, 2020 has been a difficult year for people to get engaged. I mean, we did some stuff virtually, but I think people were zoomed out <laughs> after a while, and, and we, we were doing our best to, to do some of the events. What I would say now that we are back in person, I, I like to say in the 3D version of one another, we get to see each other in that capacity. We ask students to come out to events like this so that they can have an opportunity to ask questions just like you're doing, and let us know the things that need to be addressed or that might be missing. Um, we have a lot of stuff that's happening this week, and I would say that if they weren't planning to go to events, that we hope that they will put something on their calendar that they go to. Um, the reality is there's a lot of good things happening on this campus, and it's not just happening out of my office. Um, like I say, we partner with a lot of people from around campus. We partner with our Center for Engagement and Leadership. We partner with the LGBTQ Plus Center. We partner with the Center for Black Culture and Research. I know some of these are partners are in the room, our stakeholders. Um, and so they have events that are happening this week as well. When you're engaging with them, you're engaging with us. And so we we would ask you to look at the calendar for this week. Let this be a start if you haven't been able to participate and get engaged. You don't want to, I mean, while we certainly know that classroom and academics is a part of it, you know, being at college is what you got to, that's how you get your degree. But you're getting a life degree as well, right? You're supposed to be a better person, not just by what you're learning in the classroom, but how you're engaging with people at the cafeteria, where you're engaging with the rec center, what you're engaging it when you go to an event. You're meeting lifelong friends at these things. When you go to the football games, who you're sitting beside, get to know them. Where are they from? Where, what, what, are, what, what do they like to eat for Thanksgiving? You know, there's a lot of, do they celebrate Thanksgiving? I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do that doesn't require you to go too far outside of yourselves, just be able, who is your roommate? And who's your roommate's roommate, friend? Now, I hope you've got two roommates, that'd be a problem, right? But if you, who's your roommate's friend that they hang out with all the time? Do you really know them? Do you know where they're from? Can you ask some questions of people who are just on your hall alone? And so just having some conversations would be a start. Um, Again, you can go to diversity.wvu.edu, you can go to Instagram, you can go to our Facebook, you can go to Twitter, you can find activities. I know that we're posting something every single day. We do a whole run of show for the day, for just this week alone, as to what's coming up. You can go to our website and see the links if you can't do it virtu I mean, uh, in person and you're not comfortable yet you can go to the virtual option if they have it. And this is not just for students, this is for faculty and staff and community members. So there's a lot of things that can be done. 
I know I went all the way over to a whole lot of other stuff, but hopefully I answered you. I, th I think one of the things that's really important on what you touched on, Vice President Poor, um, in this response and in your address, is that sometimes the division is not responsible for all of the work. And so if students need access to resources, one of the things that's been really phenomenal about the past year is that we've been able to connect those students with resources, reaching out to campus partners, saying, you know what, I don't always know the answer, but I have friends across this institution that do. And connecting students with other people, I really appreciate that you touched on that. We're actually going to continue with you, Shahad, um, for the next question. Before I start on the next question, I just had a point to make. Um, I'm a sophomore right now, but so this is basically my first year or semester on campus, and this week alone has been great, and I really appreciate all the work that you've put into all the diverse events, and especially today we're doing an event with the MSA at the Mountain Layer which I'm really excited about. It's going to be Misconceptions of Islam, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I'm so excited. And I and we have some surprises for the group, too, right, Nysuri? Oh. So you should tell some about Everybody should come out, but we have some surprises because of some suggestions that the group made to us. We got something for you, so we're excited. And welcome to this. You're just first time on campus, too, right? It is, yes. And so being on campus and, and having the experience of your first diversity week, we hope, again, that you will continue to educate us as a, one of our ambassadors and letting us know how we can grow. So thank you. Thank you. All right, for the next question that I have, um, what progress has been made on the development of a diversity awareness certificate and the implementations of, of diversity education in the colleges? So one of the things I think I touched on a little bit earlier is the micro-credentialing. Um, now, I will tell you that I've talked with the provost's office. I know that there's a reason for why they call it micro-credentialing. Um, we, uh, we want to dive into those opportunities, making sure that our students have that, that information in them. And then we want to begin to grow on it being credentialing in general. We do have some programs that are focused on uh, making sure that we're looking at identities and different ways in which we engage. And I think that that is also the beauty of how we can grow our campus and our, our campus um, degrees. So we'll stay tuned on some of those things, but we do have some stuff that's ready to launch um, pretty quickly. We're going to keep going with Eileen talking about uh, resources for students. Is that right, Eileen? Yes, ma'am. So first, I would like to say I did my undergrad here, and this is my grad school year, so I'm honored to participate in Diversity Week. I've seen it happen so many times and always want to get involved, so I feel honored to be sitting here with you right here. So I was wondering, how can DDEI be a resource to students who have physical disabilities or mobility impairments? So Jill Hess is our, our, D, our ADA coordinator. She ha is housed in our office, and she deals with making sure that not only accessibility services um, is answering some of the questions that may have. She partners very closely with them to ensure that our students know what available resources are there, and the same for our faculty and our staff. So we're very committed. We talked about the map. One of the things when I was talking about the app, I say the map app. Um, when we talk about the map app, it is because we recognize and understand that sometimes you want to have stuff at your, at your finger, right? You want to be able to say, I'm in this building. I came to an event. I'm not really sure where, where things are. And you should be able to just know without having to guess or ask. And, and even if you do ask, people should be available, willing to give you that information or readily able to give you that information. But we want to make it as simple as possible because we do recognize that some disabilities are visible and non-visible, right? And so at the end of the day, we provide you information for Carew Center. We provide you information for faculty staff assistance program. We will, if you need some things in regards to talking to someone and addressing some of the wellness concerns you might have, we want to make sure that we're addressing it. And when we don't get it right, we also want to know that. We've had people who have gone to buildings and a button didn't work to open the door that caused them an easier transition into the building. And we've made sure that we've corrected that. Um, and so. So uh, it's, it's, it seems small to maybe another person, but for the person who is in need of the service, it's a big deal. And so anything that you can bring to us that we could do to help you, let us know. Please do not hesitate to bring that information to my team, and we will navigate that accordingly. So we want to, if you keep here, if you haven't heard anything from me, suggestions and information is always important to how we close the gaps that we have on this campus. That is how we make a welcomed and nurtured community. That's how we make sure that we are inclusive and that we are not treating everyone the same, because everyone's not the same. It doesn't mean you're all mountaineers, but we all have different needs. And so, and the only thing we can do is have that information. If you give it to us, then that's helpful. Something else I wanted to talk about that I don't believe I addressed um, when I was in my, in my statement is identifying. 
And this is for both faculty and staff and students. You know, it is very personable how, personal how you identify yourself. If you're black, white, Jewish, Asian, whatever it might be, right? Asian American, Asian Pacific, however you identify yourself, it's your right to tell us or not tell us. But when you give us that information, it allows us to develop metrics and, and things that are able to fill the void that we might have. It also is a way for allowing us to provide resources to you, whether it be financial aid, whether it be uh, information that we, we, we could be putting in different programs that we have. So when you fail to do that, you almost silence the things that we need to know to make sure we're making a better campus. So there was an email again that, was gone, that has gone out in the last couple of weeks that talked to you about self-identifying. That information allows us to take a full account of this campus. It is not meant to cause you any harm. It really is not. It is meant to make sure that we grow as a university. It is meant to make sure that you grow as a campus community. And it is meant that we all grow collectively together as we move forward. And so I would ask that if you haven't identified yourself and you're OK to do so, to please do that. Because we want to make sure that we are building things that are being inclusive and that we're closing those gaps. So I, I answered that question. But <laughs> you made me remember that that was something that was very important to me as well. <laughs> So I actually think you answered um, our next question, but I want to make sure I'm giving you space, Eileen, to, to ask that question if you're comfortable still asking that next one. Speaking of the map app coming out, so I've noticed in my undergrad years there's only two sets of gender neutral bathrooms mm -hmm. here, one of upstairs in the lair, which is kind of iffy for those facing physical disabilities, and one in towers. There, and a lot of them are on higher floors or obscure areas. How's WV working to make these more accessible and well known to students who do use them? And I appreciate that question. We are looking at the different resources on campus, are the different options on campus where we can do those things and make it more accessible. And so that goes along a little, with, a little bit with the app that we've talked about, um, and that will probably be in the version two of that app. So we will continue to keep people updated as that is developed out, but I appreciate you raising the question, and, and I'll make sure that Jill is aware of some of the questions, that, or the needs that we need to, how we need to look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Before we keep going, I want to see if anybody in the audience has any questions. Are y'all feeling shy? There's no shy okay. people in this room. We're going to keep going, but feel free, please. Holler at me if y'all do. Um, we're going to go on to Shahad um, and hear about initiatives that impact the community at large. Um, we're going to turn it over to you. All right. So how do faculty, staff, or students get involved with the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion? What more can we do, and how can we you know, do more to help with the progression of sure. the division? So when I talked earlier about the division of the DEI committees, what I will say is if you and your college, if you want to um, go online and see who your chair is, I would say reach out to them and see what you can do to help your college in this work. Because your chair meets with me personally every single month. I mean, we have liaisons that are assigned to each college, but as a collective, the council gets together, I'm attending all those meetings, and they get to talk about the concerns, the challenges, the vision, the goals that they have set. And so what I would say, if there's something that people want to do and they want to come out, do that. That's, a, that's kind of an immediate thing that they can do that deals with their discipline area, that allows them to be able to talk to somebody that they can see on, around the halls of their college, um, and then, of course, connects that information to my office. Um, but again, you can always send me an email. You can always contact the office. You can always come up with an idea. If you have an idea that you would like to partner on, we're always looking for partners. I mean, we partner with people in the community. We partner with people on our campus communities. And as you heard me say, we partner across campuses. So system-wide, we're looking for partners. And we're always looking. There's never, there's never an end to this work. You know, when I talked about uh, going uh, white water rafting, if you don't know, the, 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 the flow, ne it never stops. It's a never-ending journey. And that's the same when it comes to this work. This is a never-ending journey. When you're looking for so, when you're looking to advocate for social justice, when you're looking to make sure we're equitable, when you're making sure that we're being inclusive and welcoming, it is always something that I wake up every single day, not just because I have a title, something that I've done my whole entire life, because I care about the human condition. I care about people. 
And as mountaineers, that's a part of that service we were talking about before, caring about one another, caring about the world in which we touch, the world in which we live, the communities in which we live, and the ones we don't live in. That is what we should be caring about. And so for me, if you have an idea, let's talk about it. If you want to get involved, come on. It, 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 let's get to it. It's no, there's nothing should be a barrier. The only thing, and even if you say to me, you know what, we're still in COVID, I don't feel like I can come out to an event, I only want to communicate virtually, we can talk virtually and we can plan an event for virtual uh, efforts because we've gotten experts in that now, haven't we? And so there's no limitation as to how we can educate, grow, and celebrate one another as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I want to be mindful of our time. I believe we're up on five minutes, is that correct? Keep me honest. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Shahad for the last and final question. Unless anybody in the audience, if you all have questions before we head out, please feel free to holler. So what are the divisions and yours short-term goals for this year? So I will say to you, um, we have a lot of short-term goals. First of all, this diversity, <laughs> we got a lot of short-term goals. Um, I will say that the short-term goal is to make sure that we're getting our um, Get Inclusive module ready for our campus opportunity for collective learning. Um, I think that's something that is crucially important to me. Um, I know my team has been working on that diligently and that we're looking forward to seeing that launch um, at the start of the spring 22 uh, semester. Um, so that to me is short term, even though it seems like it's in next year, it is still short term. What I like to see short term is that we do begin to figure out new partners around campus and helping our DEI councils touch their different colleges intentionally as it relates to this work. I think that what you when you talk about this council, I want to make sure I'm very clear about the council. It's not just set to feel good to say we have a council. That, that doesn't make me feel good. This is something that I started when I first got here. And it, it took us a couple of years to get it to where it is now. So we've been doing this for at least two and a half years to get this campus, this council, up and running in the way in which I originally envisioned it. Because we want to make sure we had strong councils. The purpose, again, is that the work is happening in each college intentionally. And when it is happening in each college, it's happening on this campus. It's not just happening out of a division. It's happening in each of our colleges, which means our students are, are celebrated, that they're being heard, they're being listened to, that, that they are beginning to see where gaps were and that they're being closed, that resources are being provided to them, that they know that the professors and that their dean is committed to making sure that this is a part of the strategy for that college. That is a part of the work. So for me, that's a short-term goal that people may think is a long-term goal, but I think that we can get to that and we have a charge to each of those college um, uh, uh, committees that they also have short-term goals. What are they? How are we going to see help you get through those? And then the long-term goal, the long-term goal for me would really be that everyone's able to be comfortable having these conversations. The long-term goal is that every time someone tells you you've offended them in some capacity, you don't begin to be the one that now is offended. Oftentimes when we have a discussion about where we need to close gaps, we begin to take it as an affront against our, our work, our effort, our ability, or our care. And that is not what is being said. What is saying is that we as Mountaineers are accountable for what we're doing well, and we're accountable for what we're not getting the best, that we're not, and, and, and it's not the best that it could be. It doesn't mean you're not making an effort, but we know you can do more, and if you can, let's do it together. That's all that is. And so for me, when we get all of us on that same page, that all of us has a part to play in this community. All of us has a part to play as it relates to this work, regardless of your race, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your religion or the lack thereof, regardless how you your intersectionality and how you identify, that we're mountaineers. And that's one thing that we all have in common. And as mountaineers, we're supposed to stand again together as one mountaineer family, as one WVU, and move this thing onward with intentionality and resolve. See, I wasn't planning on summing it up that way, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> Before we let folks out, I want to turn it back over to the students to see if y'all have any additional questions. We have the vice president. It's y'all's opportunity to really drive it home in case there's anything that's lingered. Or turn it over to the folks in the audience um, in case y'all had any questions. All right, if you do, we're gonna be sticking around in the hallway for a Moments with Misha event after this. 
We've got some great stuff in the back. Please feel free and buen provecho to the cheese, grapes, all kinds of fruit that's back there. Thank you so much to everybody that's joined us today. Thank you to Ines for being our ASL interpreter for today's event. Thanks to all who have joined online. Thank you so much, Vice President. Thank you so much to our students. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Where's